Good morning, Life Spring. Welcome to church today. Let's all stand up. Who's ready to worship the Lord today? Amen. Hey, uh, we want to welcome you also if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube. Welcome, welcome. We appreciate you. Thank you. And uh, we're just going to have a great time in God today. We've got a special guest family today that's going to minister uh, to us, the Rory family. We're excited about that. In the meantime, let's just uh, focus on the Lord. And um, David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let's go into the house of the Lord. And the Bible says that in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. How many of you want that kind of joy today? And, you know, um, if, if we can't experience the presence of God in church, where can we experience it, right? So just let these uh, musicians and singers minister to you. We encourage participation instead of spectation, <laughs> if that's a word. I think I just made up a new word. Be a participator, not a spectator. You do you, and uh, we love you and thank you. Welcome to Life Spring Church this morning. Father, we're just so uh, excited, Lord, that uh, what you have planned today, God, I believe you have uh, planned a, a great message and great ministry, and you're going to touch hearts and lives and, and transform us, Lord, and, and, and change us, Lord, forever. Because when we encounter the presence of the Lord, we're forever changed. So we thank you for that. We thank you for the joy in the house, and we give you glory and honor today in Jesus' name. Amen.
love about that song is it says it in such a poetic way. It says that, that God's willing to do anything uh, to, for our love. He's willing to do anything to draw us near him. And he chases us down. You know, uh, in, in my life, I can't see, I can't remember a time that God wasn't there. Was at least looking over my shoulder and pulling me closer to him. And so, and God finishes what he started, starts. That's what the great thing is. So no matter what, if you're here today, then God's working on your heart. And, uh, and we're glad you're here today. Uh, so, uh, so let's join in. We're going to do one more. And uh, uh, let's just join in and, and just remember God's love. Setting. 
come on church we can do better than that the word the word says that jesus is coming back with a shout with a shout a trumpet blast and a shout can we give god a shout this morning come on let's praise the lord hallelujah thank you jesus Woo. and if you're not ready to go right now after the message and the altar call maybe you will be god bless you as you're seated today we're so excited you're here we want to welcome you today in fact if it's your first visit you're our guest and we welcome you here and we actually have a free gift for you in the back room off to your right called the next step room we would love to meet you and make your acquaintance um, also today uh, if if you want to uh, give to uh, the church or to Tony Tony Rory's ministry uh, men of honor ladies of honor you can feel free to do that in front of you your chairs are tithing envelopes and uh, also uh, connect cards we encourage you to use those and fill those out and put them in the offering buckets placed around the, the room um, uh, one thing I, I told Tony a while ago is one thing I love about his guests today that they're friends of his they asked to sit on the front row that's just so that's just so awesome and so rare I mean most guests at a church are scared to death of that front row like it's gonna bite or something but thank you Thank you for uh, sitting on the front row. That's that's awesome, and we're excited. I met uh, Tony and Melissa uh, just recently. We made a reacquaintance because we were sitting at a restaurant, and they were sitting at a table across, and we looked at each other, and we hadn't seen each other for a few years, and we're like, aren't you? And aren't you? And like, yes, and yes. And we got to know each other. It was wonderful, and now we uh, fully support, of course, their ministry here at the church and um, it's just exciting and we go back a long ways tony actually got saved at my dad's church new life fellowship dad and mom my mom and dad's church and uh i don't know if you know or not but these two over here are kind of legends in the faith we're honored that they they attend here at life spring church they have a ministry here mervin darlene walker and they've had a lot of fruit and there's one of their fruit of their ministry so we're just excited about that and now um we're going to move out of the way, and uh, how many of you just not, you're just not finished worshiping yet? All right, good, because we got one more song for you as uh, Daniel and Rachel bless you this morning. Hill, we your blood was spilled for my ransom, and everything I once held dear, I count it all as loss, and lead me to the cross where your love poured out. And bring me to my knees, Lord, I lay me down. And rid me of myself, I belong to you. Oh, lead me. Lead me to the cross. Tempted and tried, human, your word became flesh, but my sin and death, and now you're
the cross to your to your heart lead me to your heart lead me to your heart lead me to the cross where your love poured out bring me to my And that's your cue to hit the video. Did you know that in the U.S., 46% of kids woke up this morning without a dad in the home? Did you know that in urban areas today, 78% of young people don't have a dad in the home? Did you also know that fatherless students are five times more likely to commit suicide? They're 15 times more likely to have behavioral disorders. Fatherlessness is the epidemic right now in our country. So let me tell you how Men and Ladies of Honor began. I would say it's nothing really short of a, of a miracle that, that God did. You know, I was working as a, a principal in the inner city of Dallas uh, on what they call a Title I or an at-risk school. And what that means basically is all the students that go to that school for the majority uh, come from single parent homes, um, low socioeconomics, um, just to have a lot of strikes against them already. And my job was discipline. So day after day in my office, I was dealing with mainly boys that um, the common denominator was they just didn't have dads. So being a dad and being a believer in Christ, I started mentoring a group of four boys and I started teaching them the basics. You know, I started off with yes sir and no sir and yes ma'am and you know, open the door for your teacher and just the basics. And these four kids that were really the worst on our campus quickly became the very best on our campus. And without really even promoting it, one day I looked up and the group of four boys had turned into 50 boys that were all sitting across from me saying, teach us how to be men. So at the end of that school year, a transformation had taken place on our campus. The district called me in and they said, what is it that you're doing that's different than our other schools? Because your discipline rates have cut in half, your test scores have gone up, your attendance has gone up, and we know you're not that smart. I said, well, you're not probably not gonna wanna hear this, but I'm teaching these boys how to be Christ-like men. They said, you're right, we don't wanna hear that, but could you do that on three campuses? And that's how we began. So from that time on, we began to expand all over the US, and now we're in 13 countries, and we're stepping onto public school campuses, and we're seeing as many as 400, 300 students respond at one time and join in these after-school men of honor, ladies of honor programs. So one of the more stellar examples that I could give you about impact in the public schools was when we went on to the campuses in Mesquite, Texas. We went into all nine junior highs and we did record launches. As I mentioned, we had at one junior high 421 students. And in that group of students, we went through several meetings. And in one meeting, we saw as many as 200 students give their heart to Christ at one time. One of our most successful campuses was in Mesquite, Texas at AC New. One of the students that really stood out to me was, was Drew. Um, coming in as a sixth grader, he was in my pre-athletics class, and we had several issues with Drew getting into confrontations with other students, clashing with, with people on campus, administrators, teachers, and, and, and a lot of times Drew didn't want to accept responsibility for his actions. Before I was in Men of Honor, I felt like the uh, like I was always a bad kid. 
and um, I would always try to bully other people, and I wouldn't respect anybody, not even my teachers. When I think about Drew, I think about that being the biggest transformation, as to go from originally him not wanting to acknowledge, um, you know, anything that had gone wrong, but but to watch his involvement in the men and ladies of honor, for him to go from not wanting to acknowledge that, um, but then to go from yes. I, I acknowledge that there was a part that I played in this. I'm gonna own my responsibility. And that happened over a period of time. The more involved he became um, in the Men and Ladies of Honor, he became much more receptive to that. What I like about Men of Honor is that uh, Commander Drew is always there to help me and a lot of the coaches are too. And it makes me think about a lot of what I do, like being mean to people and then it helps me change myself. And so just seeing that progression over the years uh, of him coming in, being troubled, um, getting a lot of negative reports at home, even seeing things like being suspended, to really making an effort to not make that a part of his life anymore. And so seeing him change his track record, uh, seeing him make a, some big changes to uh, just uh, improve the quality of his life. And I'm very proud of him, uh, very proud of the man he's become. And not just that, the people respect him for who he is. I want to thank everybody who's helped me come this far. Our vision is to take men of honor and ladies of honor to every single public school beginning in the United States and all over the world. I really believe that if we impact students at this young age when they're most impressionable, it's kind of like we're working with wet concrete, but we can help them to mold and shape the character and honor and relationship with God that I believe will transform their lives, their communities, and ultimately our nation. But we need men like you to step up and say, I'll, I'll go on the campus, I may not have it all, I may not uh, be the, the most dynamic speaker, but I will come on the campus and I will serve for one hour once a week. If you do that, brother, you will change the world. Please welcome Tony and Melissa Rory. Good morning, World Changers. Good morning, Life Spring Church. How's everybody doing this morning? Good to see you. Man, my heart is already full. I don't know about y'all. After hearing that song, Pastor Rex and Amy and the welcome and Pastor Merv and Sister Walker and then seeing all of our friends here. we got Eddie and April that are here and Colton. They brought Colton. Yeah. And Lily. Awesome. Give them a hand. Yeah. Yeah. Got Billy and Molly down here and Colton. I'm going to come down and fist bump you in a minute. <laughs> and then my family's here. And that was my son in whom I'm well pleased and my daughter. Yes. And then my son, my son in love and daughter and grandson, Nixon. Y'all stand up for a minute. And beautiful Haley's here with Daniel. Yeah. Across the whole crew, didn't we? And then one of my oldest, because he's really old, and dearest friends, Chad's here on the yes. front row. Yes. I, I, yeah. Yeah. I gave Melissa her first kiss uh, 32 Two. years ago on the hood of Chad's car. So. He's known us a long time. Way back. Yeah, and so I bring Melissa up with me always because uh, I'm not very impressive, but when people see my wife, they go, this guy's got it going on. So, honey, say something profound, would you? Good morning. Good morning. We're so excited to be here today. It's always an honor to be with our friends, Pastor Rex and Amy, and thank you for having us today. And I got to spend some time with some of your ladies yesterday at the conference that Amy had invited me to. Such a refreshing time for me. Um, the bride of Christ, you know, realizing who we are in our identity. And so this morning when I woke up, I, I promise you, I told Tony, when I woke up, the words in my head were, taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. And I don't know if that was a scripture that they shared with us yesterday, but I woke up with that on my mind and I was like, okay, Lord, taste and see that the Lord is good. So this morning during my reading, I was like, okay, Lord, I, I want to see what this means. And so I don't know who this is for this morning, but God put this on my heart. So I just want to share it with you. But in Psalm 30, is that three? I don't have my glasses on. 34. 34. <laughs> okay, I hit a milestone birthday this year, so don't judge. <laughs> okay, so Psalm 34, and I'm going to start in verse 1. But the, the title for this passage in the Bible is The Happiness of Those Who Trust in God. And so I just want to read, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked to him and were radiant and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out and the Lord heard him and saved him out of 
all his troubles, not just some of his troubles, but all of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man or woman who trusts in him. So I don't know who this is for this morning, but anything you're going through, taste and see that the Lord is good because he will help you get through anything, any trials, any circumstances that come out. If you taste and see that the Lord is good, we can get through anything. Amen? Amen. All right, so that, that was what God had on my heart awesome. this morning. So if y'all don't mind, I would like to pray this morning. So if we could stand, I just want to pray before we, before Tony brings the word this morning. And, and if you're comfortable with it, if you put your hands out, that's like a sign of surrender. And I always see that as God, I'm opening my heart to receive what you have. So if we could do that this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for this time together. Thank you for your anointing that is already in this place, God. Father, I pray for each and every person that is in this room or can hear my voice, Father. It's no mistake that they are here to be a part of this this morning. Father, as we lift our hands up to you, I just pray that you open our minds, our hearts, and our spirits to receive the word that you have given to Tony this morning for us. Father, you are a good God. And we love you, Jesus, and we thank you for the freedom that we have to come together to worship you and to hear your word. Now, if you'll just put your hands towards Tony. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this mighty man of God. Lord, I thank you for the word that you have stirred in his heart, Father. And Lord, I thank you for the discipline that you have given him. I know that this word is from you. I've seen him studying and meditating and spending time with you, Father. I pray the anointing flow through him from his head to his feet, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for the word that we are going to receive today, and we give you glory for this service. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Awesome. Thank you, honey. Wow. Tell everybody that's my BMW, my beautiful, magnificent wife. <laughs> Guys, you can steal that. Amen. Well, I'm excited to be with you this morning. I want to talk to you a little bit about upgrade. Everybody say upgrade. upgrade. You know, it's time for an upgrade. You know, I don't know about you, but uh, there's times in life when I, when, I, when I say to myself, there's got to be more than this, you know? Life's got to be more than this. But I want to tell you this morning there is. And, and this morning I want to talk to you about a time of upgrade. Open your Bibles with me, if you can, to Luke chapter 5. If not, then I'll read it for you. Luke chapter 5 is a story where Jesus is with his disciples, specifically with Peter. And it starts off saying, So it was, as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God, that he stood by the lake of Gennesaret. And he saw two boats standing by the lake, but the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Then he got onto one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. And when he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let your nets down for a catch. But, but Simon answered and said to him, Master, we've told all night, caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. Notice Jesus said, put down the nets, because Jesus is always thinking about a big catch. Yeah. But Peter says to him, Lord, you don't really understand fishing like we do. We're professional fishermen, but at your word, uh, I guess I'll, I'll try it, so let me let down the net. A lot of time we have a net mentality when Jesus is trying to get us to have a, a nets mentality, and that's called an upgrade. Yeah. So I want to tell you today that if, you're do if what you're doing is not working, Jesus wants to get inside your boat, and he wants to help you to do things yeah. that create a big catch. Amen? Yeah. Isn't that exciting to know that God loves us? Because if, if what you're doing is not getting it, it's time for an upgrade. Everybody say upgrade. upgrade. It was 1992, and I was a roofer. I used to roof houses. Anybody that's roofed houses before? God bless you. Thank you. We know what real work is, don't we? <laughs> and so I needed a vehicle because it wasn't cutting it, driving Melissa's little Nissan Pulsar to a roofing job. You can't carry shingles. You can't carry anything, right? So we decided we were going to go down and get me a truck. And it was, a, it was 1992, but we got a 1988 Chevy S10. You remember this? four-cylinder okay it had a, it was a five-speed and it was an awesome truck it had air conditioning had AM and FM and it had a cassette tape y'all remember cassette tapes yeah and so I drove that truck and it was awesome had the tonneau, co tonneau cover on the back of it and I wore that truck out we, we got it off a, a Garland Road where it was like a tote to note place y'all familiar with that yeah 
no credit check needed, no, no job needed, just had to show up every week and pay for it. But I kind of raised my family. I can still see Lauren, remember, uh, bu bullfrogs and butterflies, and she's behind my arm as I'm shifting, and I can still see all the kids hitting the top of the ceiling after I hit that big bump on <laughs> Duck Creek. Yeah, you know right where it's at. Yeah, yeah. But I raised my family in it. But uh, yeah, still there. <laughs> he hit it. He knows where it's at. But over a period of time, I got that truck paid off, you know, and then stuff started kind of going south with it, as things do with Chevy sometimes. But uh, <laughs> it, it had a little bit of a problem with the emergency brake. I remember I had a coat hanger tied around something that I would have to pull it out. But I remember one day I pulled up at church and kicked on the emergency brake and got out. Lauren was actually in a, in a, in a baby seat at this time, so I had, had her on one arm. And I'm walking to the church, and on the front of the church, it was all glass. And so I was looking at the glass and kind of checking my hair and stuff, and then this, this black truck goes driving behind me. I was like, that truck looks just like my, that's my truck. I popped out of gear and was rolling through the parking lot. So my, my ride started letting me down. So flash forward, it's, it's 2003, and I'm now a school principal proof that God is real, okay? Those of you who know me on a personal level, the fact that I was ever a school principal, it's proof that God's real. And I went to the, to the fair, and uh, they pulled out this brand new, it was like a 2003 gold Dodge Ram, and it had, S SLT had everything in it, right? And I got to looking at that thing, but I, I realized that no payments is much better. And uh, Melissa goes, you know what, you ought to get one of those. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to spend that much money. And then next thing we know, we're, we're at the fair, we're at the rodeo, and then they pull up in one and start seeing it on TV. And everywhere I'm at, I start seeing this truck. So I eventually go down, and I upgraded to that brand-new Dodge Ram pickup. And it completely changed my life, y'all. <laughs> I could go into places, and the back of my shirt wasn't soaking wet from sweat, you know. Uh, I, I could listen to, to the radio again. I could have air conditioning. It just kind of upgraded my life. And eventually I passed it on to my son who drove it for many years. So it blessed my life and it blessed the next generation. There is power in an upgrade. Everybody say upgrade. Okay. But some of us today are driving around with an old mindset that we get stuck in and we kind of begin to settle for things in our life. Well, I want to I challenge you today to begin to think about making an upgrade in your life. Jesus said it like this in John chapter 10, verse 10. He said, the thief does come not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I came that they would have life and they would have it abundantly. Amen. Jesus wants you to have an abundant life. Yes. Listen, Jesus did not pay the terrible price that he paid so that you could live a mediocre life. Right. He wants you to have an upgraded life today. Amen? Amen. So we say to ourselves, there's got to be more. And the Bible says it in 2 Corinthians 5.17. It says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, that person is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are becoming new. And that speaks of upgrade in, in our life. I really believe that the rest of your life can be the very best of your life. Some of you are looking at your life and you're saying, well, it's pretty good. Can I tell you something? It can be better. Or some of you are looking back at your past and you're saying, well, uh, the way things have been going, I don't see how it can get better. I want to tell you, your past is no indication of your future. God is the indication of your future. But with us, it just takes a decision to say, I want to make an upgrade in my life. Amen? Turn to your neighbor and say, it's time for you to upgrade. Just go ahead and tell them. So 2022 is not a year for us to shrink back in faith, but it's time for us to to move forward in, into boldness. And I love this about Jesus. Jesus, every time that he did a miracle, the, the Bible said that he would stop, whether it was, you know, feeding multitudes or opening blind eyes or, or opening deaf ears or raising the dead. But the Bible said that from time to time, he would stop and he would look up to heaven. There he is. What was he doing? You know, sometimes we have to get our mind off of the circumstances that we're going through. Sometimes we have to forget about the things that are around us and look up and get a new perspective on the things that God has for us. We, we know it all in the Lord's Prayer, right? Most of us in the room that know it, say it with me. Uh, how's it begin? Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So that's, Jesus is saying that the way that he wants it to be on earth is the way that it is in heaven. 
But in order for us to do that, we have to look up to heaven and get a perspective, and that's what Jesus did. So today we want to talk to you about a new, a new perspective. And it can be for this. Maybe you need a, a new perspective for your marriage. Amen? Maybe you need a new perspective for your business. Maybe it's for your ministry, or maybe it's just for your life and the way that you go through things. I know a lot of people today are struggling with depression and anxiety and, and a lot of baggage that God does not want you to carry. Jesus wants you to live an abundant life, y'all. He wants you to have the very best of what he has to offer, and he paid the price for us. The Bible says in Isaiah that he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we were healed. And if we were healed, we are healed. Amen? So in Isaiah chapter 54, I love this, and it starts off by saying, Sing, O barren. And a barren woman is a woman who, who couldn't produce, couldn't have a baby, and it was a terrible feeling. But he's saying, I want you to start singing, even though you're in a bad situation. He said, you who have not born, break forth into singing and cry aloud, you who have not labored with child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married woman, says the Lord. And then he gives some instructions. Enlarge the place of your tent. Let them stretch out the curtains of your dwelling. Do not spare. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. For you shall expand to the right and to the left, and your descendants will inherit the nations and make the desolate cities inhabited. Do not fear, for you will not be ashamed. Neither be disgraced, for you will not be put to shame. For you will forget the shame of your youth and will not remember the rep reproach of your wid widowhood anymore. For your maker is your husband. The Lord of hosts is his name, and your Redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. He is called the God of the whole earth. Amen. So he's saying to us, begin to upgrade, begin to expand, begin to think bigger about the things that God has for our life. And this morning, I just want to share with you quickly three ways that we can upgrade our lives. Amen? Amen. So the first way is upgrade your perspective on relationships. Relationships are key, you know? Uh, we say it like this in our family. It's, it's alignment before assignment. So more important than what you're doing is who you're doing it with. Amen? When you're walking with people, it, it's very, very important because some people can pull you further away from Jesus, yeah. and some people can push, push you closer to Jesus. As I'm saying that today, the Holy Spirit's reminding some pe about some people in your life. So we got to be very careful about the people that we allow into our life. Amen? Amen. So let's talk about the first relationship. The first relationship I want to talk to you about is your relationship with God. And I'm not talking about how much you read the Bible or how often you go to church, but I want to talk to you about intimacy with Christ. Because there's a whole lot of difference between knowing about God and knowing God. Y'all with me today? So my buddy Scott Wilson, y'all know Scott, uh, dear friend, and he tells this story about him and his girlfriend. And at this time, she was date, dating two guys, and she was trying to figure out which one she was going to marry. She's kind of doing the courting thing, right? And Scott said, I knew I was, I was low in the running, but I was in love with this girl. And uh, I knew that, that you know, I, I, I wasn't gonna, probably going to be the one, but I was going to give it my best shot. So he said, uh, she called me up, and she said, Scott, I've made the decision. I'm going to go with the other guy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to allow him to, you know, court for marriage. And... Uh, he said, I was so heartbroken, but I was not going to give up. So I asked her, I said, can I just come over to your house and just give you a hug and just say goodbye and drop off some stuff? And she said, yeah. And he said, so I went there in the bathroom. He said, I got my Dracar. Y'all remember Dracar? <laughs> he said, I loaded up, put it all over me. He said, I went over to her house in my favorite polo shirt and pulled up. And he said, I walked up to her and I said, you know, I understand how it is. I just want to tell you how much I care about you and how much I'll be here for you. He said, I gave her a big hug, and he said, I just held on to her. He said, I smeared that dracar all over her. <laughs> and then he left, and then sure enough, the next guy comes up a little bit, and you know, he had been telling her, I don't want you seeing this Scott guy anymore. If we're going to date, then it needs to just be me and you. So he shows up, and he's spending some time with her, and he goes, are you wearing dracar? And she looks kind of fishy, and he said, was Scott over here earlier? She said, yeah, he sure was. I, I, I just was cutting it off with him. He said, I've had enough of this, and he ends up leaving. Oh. Scott married that woman. He's married to her today. Amen. Yeah. 
So when we spend time with Jesus, the Bible starts talking about we become the aroma of Christ. So much so, it says it in, in, uh, it's in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 14 through 15. It says, and it's one of my favorite verses because here's what it says in verse 14. Now, thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ and through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. For we, for we are to God the fragrance of Christ among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. See, God wants you to spend time with him in intimacy. He wants you to have the kind of relationship with him so that you begin to smell like him. So that the devil comes around and he smells Jesus and he has to run off. God wants to have that kind of intimacy. So the first thing uh, that I want to tell you, the Lord told me to tell you this. The Lord longs to spend time with you. Amen. Amen. He, he longs to spend time with you. Friendship with God is the most important friendship that we can ever have. The Bible says that, that friendship with God is reserved for those who fear him. And the Bible says that the fear of the Lord is to, to depart from sin. Mark chapter 2 tells the story of, of some good friends. And we all, I'm so glad to have some of my crazy friends here with me. Amen. Got some crazy friends here with me, right? And we all need to have some crazy friends, right? In Mark chapter 2, it tells the story about some crazy friends. And, the, and their buddy was sick. And they thought, well, if we could just get him and get him to Jesus, this Jesus is healing everybody. They heard about it everywhere, you know. So they said, let's get him over there. He's going to be at so-and-so's house tonight. But when they approached the place where the house was, the Bible said that people had come from near and far to see Jesus, so much so that nobody could even get in the house. But, but thank, thankful for crazy friends, crazy friends said, well, I got an idea. Let's climb up on top of the house. Let's rip a hole in the roof, and let's drop him down there. How many know we need some friends that are willing to go the length to get us what we need, right? So I imagine they went up there. It was probably in those times a sod roof or or some sort of, you know, structure like that. And they're tearing it up, and there's boards and stuff like that. But they make a hole big enough. Imagine right down beneath them is Jesus sitting and teaching. And he's looking up going, you know, this dirt stuff falling everywhere. But he's really impressed because the Bible says this. It says, when Jesus saw their faith, not the faith of the man to be healed, but when Jesus saw the faith of his friends... He told him, your sins are forgiven you, and immediately he rose and took up the bed, so much so that everybody said, we never saw it like this. Pretty amazing. Yeah. See, Jesus oftentimes doesn't just look at our faith. He looks at the faith of the people that are around us. Sometimes your miracle is held in the faith of those that are believing for you, around you. That's why it's important to have some crazy friends. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'll be your crazy friend. Just go ahead and tell them. The Bible tells us that, that, that friendship, and it, it goes on to say that foolish people isolate themselves, you know, and uh, it's easy to isolate yourself because having friends is hard. Being around people is hard because you get hurt and things happen, but it's so important that the two fastest ways that we grow are the relationships that we keep and the books that we read. So relationships are the first way, and I'm just going to move fast because I see my time is up here starting to come up. But here's what it says. It says, uh, you are the, you've heard this before, you are the sum total of your five closest relationships. If you hang around with four millionaires, you'll become the fifth. If you hang around with, with four losers, you'll become the fifth. It, just turn to your neighbor and say, he's talking about you now. Just go ahead and tell him. <laughs> so the second way that we change and the second way that we can upgrade is to upgrade our perspective on our identity. Everybody say identity. Everything is about identity. This is the way that Satan attacked Jesus. Right off the bat, right out of his mouth, if you really are the son of God, he began to attack his identity. And the, and the enemy wants to do that with you. He wants you to, to think less of yourself. Because if he can get you to think less of yourself, you won't accomplish the things that God has for you. But if you understand what your true identity is, you'll do great things. The Bible says this in Daniel 11.32. It says, but the people who know their God shall be strong and carry out great exploits. Yes. The year was 1990, Ottawa, Canada. There was a young man, his name's Danny Simpson. He uh, decided he's going to rob a bank. And his grandfather had given him a pistol. So he walked into the bank with this pistol and he robbed the bank. Got $6,000. Made it away, got far away, but, but eventually they caught up with him and they caught him. 
six years in prison. He had to serve six years in prison for stealing $6,000. So when they arrested him, they looked at the pistol that he had, and they, they thought, it's an interesting antique pistol. And they got to looking at the pistol. Come to find out, it was a 1918 Ross Colt, one of 100 made. It was worth $100,000. So he robs a bank for $6,000 when he's got, got $100,000 in his hand. He aborted his future not knowing what he had in his hand. He didn't understand what his identity was. See, you today have in your hand incredible worth, incredible value, incredible potential. The Bible says that you are an heir of God and a joint heir with Christ. And you have everything that God wants you to have, but you've got to understand that unless you begin to claim those birthrights, they will remain un unclaimed. You see, we either live by design or by default. We can design our life to be the fullness of what God has for us if we'll believe the promises of God. Amen? Amen? And that's what we need to do. We need to err on the side of asking too much. We need to err on the side of believing too big. You know, as we think about the Israelites when they went into the Canaan land, God was not angry for them with them for asking for too much. He was angry with them because they couldn't believe that he was going to bless them with a great inheritance. They said things about themselves like, we're, we're like grasshoppers, and people see us as grasshoppers. Well, how do they know that? They can't read minds, right? But they didn't understand their identity. So when we go, go big. Amen? Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, go big. Just go ahead and tell them. The third thing and the final thing, and I'm bringing this ship in for a landing, uh, in order for us to upgrade, we have to upgrade our perspective on God's word and our words. Your words are so powerful. Think about how did God create the heavens and the earth. He didn't do it with his hands. He did it through his spoken word. He said, let there be light, and there was light. Let there be, and when he spoke, it happened. And the Bible says that God created us in his image, and our words are so powerful. When we begin to replace our words with God's word, tremendous miracles begin to happen. The Bible says in Proverbs that the power of of life and death is in our tongue. And it says those who love it will eat the fruit thereof. In other words, those who understand this principle will live off of the benefits of being able to do that. I've seen that in my life because what was passed down to me from my parents was a lot of broke talk, a lot of boast, busted talk, a lot of dysfunctional talk. But I learned to replace what I was saying and what I was thinking with God's word. It began to change things in my life. Amen. James chapter 3, verse 4, um, James tells us, he said, look at the ships. He said, although they are large and they are driven by fierce winds, they're turned by a little bitty rudder on the back. A great big ship is turned by a little small rudder that moves that ship wherever it wants to go, right? And it says they're turned by a very small rudder wherever the pilot desires. Verse 5, even so, the tongue is a little member and it boasts great things. If you don't like the way that your ship is sailing, you can turn that ship. If you don't like the way that your life is going, you can change the way that you speak and change the direction that your life is going. By the things that you say, if you replace your word with the words of God, it'll change you. Because it takes as much energy to talk yourself out of something as it does to talk yourself into something. Amen? Amen. The Lord spoke to me once and he said, I've given believers the dominion of Adam, the blessings of Abraham, and the anointing of Christ. That's what we have as believers in him. Think about that for a minute. The dominion that God gave Adam, the blessings that he gave Abraham, and the anointing that he gave to Jesus. That's us, for us, and it's available now. Anybody say, I could use that in my life? I could use that in my life, amen. And how that looks is, I woke up feeling rough one morning, got out of bed, and I said, you know, I just don't feel good. I hate my job. Everything's going bad. I just got this feeling like something's going to go wrong, you know? You ever get that feeling like, like the other shoe's going to drop and things are not going well in my life? I just feel like everything's kind of jacked up right now. Anybody ever thought that way? Am I the only one? Okay. I know I'm negative. But then all of a sudden I thought, you know what? I'm not going to say that. And I stood up and I said, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. The blessings of God are mine. God loves me. I'm his favorite. 
His hand is upon me. He's anointed me to do great things. When I walk, miracles begin to happen. When I pray, God answers. When, when I look for things and opportunities, they begin to happen. And I start talking like this. And all of a sudden, that perspective that I had just falls off. And new things begin to happen. The definition of, of fear is something that you cannot see is going to come to pass. The definition of faith is something that you cannot see is going to come to pass. They both have the same definition. One is negative and one is positive, and both of them attract things to your life. When you walk in faith, you can attract wonderful things in your life if you attract the things of God. Amen? Turn to your neighbor and say, I got that. Just go ahead and tell them, I got that. So it's time, it's time for an upgrade. If you look at your life and you're looking at the Bible and you, you, you read about these miracles and you say, well, that's not been my experience. Can I tell you, it's time to upgrade your experience because you can have everything that this word says that you can have. You can do what this Bible says that you can do if you will believe. And it all comes with a decision. I want to tell you this morning that you're greater than you think. You're loved more than you, can, than you think. You can do more than you can think because God loves you and he cares about you. I'll close with one more story. There was a man, and uh, a very wealthy man. He had a wife. They loved each other very, very much. Got a huge estate, nice cars, antiques, paintings, huge home. And uh, they loved each other very, very much. And even in her older age, she became pregnant. And it was a, a real uh, troubled uh, pregnancy. But at the end of the pregnancy, she gave birth to a son. But right after she gave birth, she passed. And here this man, his world was somewhat ended, but then he had this beautiful son. And he raised this son and loved him and gave him everything and spent all this time with him and poured into him. Uh, but sadly, the boy was also sick, and at the age of 11, he also passed. So here this man is by himself, having lost his family and ha having all this great wealth. He lived a few more years, but he gave some special instructions that when he... When he passed, he wanted the estate to be auctioned. And he said, I have some very specific instructions for that. So the man ended up passing. And the auctioneer came and, and set up there at his house. And, uh, he said, I have some very specific instructions on the way that this, this auction is going to go. He said, the first thing is, is the first thing that we're going to bid on. And they had the cars out there and the antiques and all this stuff. So the first thing that we're going to bid on is this painting. He turned it around, and it was a painting of the 11-year-old of the boy that the father loved so much. And he said, the bidding's going to start on this painting. All the bidders are looking around. They're like, I don't want a painting of an 11-year-old kid that I don't even know. Come on, let's get, let's get on with the auction, you know. And he said, do I have a bid for, say, $500? Then they all started looking at each other. like, why would I pay $500 for a painting of an 11-year-old? But in the back of the room, a man stood up and he said, I don't, he said, I only have $500. He said, but, but I would bid on that because I know that young man. He said, I used to serve this family. I was actually their butler. He said, I know that young man. I knew the father and I love them both very much. So I'll give my last $500 for that painting. The auctioneer said, all right, anybody else in the room? 500, do I hear 550, 550? No one, 500. Going once going twice so he said this auction is now closed like, what what about the stuff what about the cars what about the antiques what about all this furniture what about this big estate he said I told you I had some specific instructions and the instructions were whoever gets the sun gets everything so I want to close in saying that your relationship with God is, is the, the most important thing. So I want to give you an opportunity today for those who are courageous, those who are not courageous as well. I want to give you an opportunity to, first of all, if you've not made Jesus the Lord of your life and you need to do that today, I'm going to invite you to come and stand right here in the front. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to pray with you. And then I also want to invite some other courageous people in the room that would say, you know, I've not been living in a right relationship with God, but I want to get it right today. I want to upgrade. I want to upgrade the way that I'm thinking. Maybe just go to the next level in my commitment with God. Maybe go to the next level in the way that I think about things. I'm going to invite you to join me 
as well. So all over this place, we could just stand. And I'm looking for the brave ones. If that's you this morning, all over this room, step out of your chair quickly. Come to me right down here in the front. And I'm going to pray with you. Come on, all over this place. Step out right now. Right down here in the front. Yes, God bless you. Come on, quickly, quickly, all over the room. Yep, that's you. God's talking to you. You know your heart's beating if God's talking to you right now. Don't be ashamed either. No one ever looks down on someone for doing this. They always go up to them for being courageous about it. Amen. Awesome. 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 Turn to your neighbor and say, you want to go down there? I'll go down there with you. Just grab by the hand and say, that's you. Come on. Grab them quickly and bring them down here. Come on. Quickly. Yeah. Tell them I'll come with you. Yeah, come on. God bless you. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait another five seconds for those of you that know you should be down here but are not quickly come. Make a big step. Time to upgrade. Amen? Time to upgrade. Let's make an upgrade this morning in our commitment to Christ. Amen? God bless you. God bless you. Turn to your neighbor and say, this is awesome. Just go ahead and come. The Bible says, Jesus told a story. He said there was a certain, like a, a pool. And once a year, an angel of the Lord would come down and would stir this pool. And whoever the first one was that went and touched the water, they got healed. So God's stirring some waters this morning. And you were the first ones to come down, amen? And so God's going to heal your life. You're going to get a miracle today because you believe in it, amen? But let's lift our hands right like this, the international symbol of surrender. Just repeat after me and say, Jesus, I love you. I believe you died for me. I believe you, you paid a, a terrible price for me. You shed your blood on the cross. You died. You were buried. And you rose again. You're alive forever. Jesus, thank you. Lord, forgive me of my sins. Wash me in the blood of Jesus. Cleanse me and make me new. Come into my heart. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Give me a new life. Give me a new life. I want to upgrade. I want you to be first in my relationships. I want you to show me who I am in you. I want you to give me the inheritance of And Lord, I will serve you from this day forward. In Jesus' name. Now let me pray for you. Father, I thank you that have made this bold decision, Lord, to follow you, to upgrade, to step it up, to go to the next level. So, Father, I pray that you would show up in a powerful way. You said wherever two or more are gathered in your name, that you are there in the midst of them. So, Jesus, you are here touching hearts, touching hands, Lord, laying hands on bodies right now. Sicknesses are being healed. Father, depression is leaving. Anxiety is leaving. Hopelessness is leaving. Because you are our hope, Lord. And in your presence, as Pastor Rick said, there is fullness of joy. Thank you for joy returning in each one of these lives. God, as they go forward today, Lord, I pray that there would be a newness of life in everything they do. And everything that their hands touch will prosper in Jesus' name. Lord, bless them now in Jesus' name. God bless you. Pastor Rick. Amen. You may be seated. Hey, uh, just real quick, if you'd like to make a donation to Men of Honor, Ladies of Honor, there's five ways to do that here at uh, LifeSpring Church. Or if you'd just like a, a donation to the church, uh, you, can, you can give online at LifeSpringTX.com. You can also text it in on the phone, 972 402-6456. You can also uh, send a, in the mail to P.O. Box 886, uh, Rockwall, Texas 75087. Uh, or we have buckets, uh, two up here and one back there. You can write a check or put a blessing in there. We, we really appreciate you. Hey, uh, if it is your first visit, we would love to meet with you back in the room in the back there where the lady and gentleman are standing back there, the next step room. If y'all could just open that door, we would appreciate it. There we go. And uh, we'll meet right in there. We have a free gift for you. 
Also, um, we, uh, I've got a great series next week. It's about worship. Can I hear you say worship? worship. The best definition I've ever uh, heard of worship is love expressed. How do you express your love to God? And that's what we're going to talk about over the next four weeks. So I'm excited. We love you. We thank you for being here. How many of you got ministered to by a great word today? Amen. God bless you. As you leave, be safe. We'll see you next week.